So we want to keep your strategies close by because we're going to use them again and again. And whenever you're stuck in algebra, these are a good way to jog your memory. So especially some of these are not going to be obvious, like multiply by conjugate over conjugate. That's one that may not be right at the tip of your brain. So you're going to want to uh, keep that close by until you've done enough identities that you know to conjugate over conjugate is a uh, valid strategy. Um, some things like factoring, you probably don't need to constantly be reminded of factoring, but factoring as difference of squares maybe could be helpful. And start on the complicated side, you'll just start doing that at some point. So we're going to get back to some more examples. So we're going to show that sine theta over 1 plus cos theta. Oh, we did this one already. No, tan theta plus cotangent theta. <coughs> divided by secant theta cosecant theta equals 1. So which side is more complicated, left or right? Left. left. Doesn't get much simpler than one. All right, so we're not going to touch the right side. We're going to only uh, perform algebra on the left side. So you have the strategies in front of you. We're starting on the complicated side. So what is one of the strategies that would be a reasonable one to use now? So right in terms of sine and cosine. So things are secants and tangents and cosecants and cotangents. So we're going to write everything in sines and cosines. So let's go ahead and take that step. So now you need to remember all, the recipro all those reciprocal identities that we wrote at the beginning of this section. So tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is the reciprocal, which is cosine over sine. And secant, 1 over cos theta, cosecant, 1 over sine theta. So we made things worse, which a lot of times will happen on the way to simplifying. So don't get too discouraged if things get worse. What can we do next? You don't really need to look at that strategy list. This is just an algebra step right here. We got fractions of fractions, so what do we do? Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I see the denominator's right here, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of that. Uh, first, I'm going to write it as a single fraction. So 1 over cos times 1 over sine is 1 over cosine times sine, written like that. And now multiply by the reciprocal. And we multiply, we're really distributing to the two pieces in here. So the first product, the cosine divided by cosine cancels out, and we're left with sine times sine, or sine squared. And what are we left with in the second term? So the second term, our sine divided by sine cancels, and we're left with cos times cos. Cosine squared. So 
So now I'm going to show you how to cheat. I think I've probably done this before, but we're going to look ahead and just write down where we're trying to go. So we're supposed to get one. Now, we're, we don't get one because we're supposed to get one. What's the real reason this equals one? So that's our Pythagorean identity that says cos squared plus sine squared equals one. So that's the reason it goes from that second to last step to the last step. However, if I'm grading your quiz and you didn't know how to go from the second to last step to the last step, I won't know what you don't know unless you write down, I have no idea why, but I just wrote down one because that's where I was trying to go. So I won't necessarily know the steps uh, that you may not know. So you can kind of um, fudge things a little bit and just write down the other side if you can't get there and hope that um, I don't catch that you didn't know. Now if you skip too many steps, if you skip all these steps here and just go right from that top step to the bottom step, I'll say you're skipping way too much. So there are other ways to prove these identities. I'll try an alternative solution right here. So what are some other strategies I could use aside from writing in sines and cosines? So I could add fractions. This fraction is already added together, so that one's out. I could multiply by conjugate over conjugate. There is one conjugate here. What conjugate? Could I multiply by? Tangent minus cotangent. That's going to make things pretty ugly, though. So I could multiply by tangent minus cotangent, but that might make things a little bit worse. So I'm going to recommend against that right here. It will eventually get you to the right answer. I think you'll use the tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared if you would multiply uh, by that. Let's instead. Actually, let's get crazy. Let's go ahead and do that. That's not that bad. So <clears throat> only multiply through by the actual conjugate. So the conju conjugate is occurring on the top. So that's tan squared theta minus cotan squared theta. The denominator, sec theta, cosecant theta, tangent minus cotangent. Now normally I would say run back to where you started. This is really scary. But we're going to keep going. So I need to start canceling some things at some point. I don't really see anything to cancel right now. So we could write down the Pythagorean identities. Tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. And let's see, cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. Unfortunately, I don't have tangent squared plus 1. I can just have tangent squared. So I'll solve the first one for tangent squared by subtracting 1. And cotangent squared subtract 1 is cosecant squared theta minus 1. This looks like it's going to get a lot worse. So let's forget this. So that's really bad. Bye. 
I don't think there's going to be a nicer way to do it than the way we originally did it. So I'll save my alternative solutions for other, other examples. All right, the next example we're going to do verify two cos squared theta minus one squared divided by cos to the fourth minus sine to the fourth. So cos to the fourth theta minus sine to the fourth theta equals one minus two sine squared theta. So more complicated side is the left. So I'm going to put the right side away and not touch it. And what to do first? Well, first thing I see is some fourth powers. So that looks a little bit scary. So let's just look at some algebra for a minute. A to the fourth minus B to the fourth. We could write as A squared squared minus b squared squared. So this is powers of powers are products. So the squared squared means um, to the fourth power. And we can factor difference of squares now. This is a squared minus b squared times a squared plus b squared. So this is difference of fourth powers. So any question on that factoring happening? What can I factor even further over here with the A's and the B's? How, what, can I, what else can I factor here? Would one of these terms factors further? A squared minus B squared. Yep, A squared minus B squared. So it's a minus b, a plus b. So let's go apply this factoring to the original denominator on the left side. So we're getting cos squared theta minus sine squared theta times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. So what's really nice about one of these two factors? Both the factors are actually kind of nice, but one is really, really nice. Why does cos squared plus sine squared cancel out? So it equals one. So if you multiply by it, it's like multiplying by one. So that one cancels out to one. Now we're still left with cos squared minus sine squared. So it's still going to be tricky. Well, <clears throat> if I'm going to cancel anything, in the numerator, I see no signs up here, just cosines and 1. So what I want to do is take out, in the denominator, take out that sine squared, put some cosine squares in its place. So I'm going to get rid of the sine squared theta. So the way we're going to do that, we can turn sine squared into cos squared using the identity cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So I'm going to solve for sine squared. Sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared theta. So this is the identity we're going to use 
to take out sine squared theta. So again, the reason I did this is because I was motivated to get rid of the sine squared because I was trying to get something that looks more like the numerator. So I didn't want a sine squared in there anymore. So we'll just simplify the bottom. We get cos squared minus one plus cos squared. So that's two cos squared theta minus one. So why can I just cancel out what's really happening on the going to the last step? So your algebra brain should be thinking about this as it's a thing squared over a thing. So it's going to cancel down to just be the thing like that. So that's how you want to break it down when you're looking at it. And it's a, a square term over just the term and it cancels out. So there's a picture of your algebra brain, what should be happening inside when you're looking at this. So you're writing some ugly stuff, but it's really just a term squared over a term. So I know that you're going to go and have a lot of questions on the homeworks. This is probably one of the first major challenging homework sections. There, there were other problems that were challenging in other sections, but this is the first set section I would say has significant number of problems that are tricky not just a few. So I'm not going to do too many examples and what I'm going to do is answer some homework questions next week that you have. So um, we're going to move on to the next uh, section and I'll come back and answer some questions in this section. So we're going to 10-4. We're going to start out with some geometry. So I'll write down what we're going to prove first, and then we'll go and show why it's true. So this is called the difference formula. for sine, for cosine. So cos A minus B equals cos A times cos B plus sine A times sine B. So there is no reason why this would just be true automatically. No reason to believe that just by looking at it. Uh, there, this should look difficult to memorize. It is difficult to memorize a little bit. And so what I do is now uh, this is going to appear on your cheat sheet, your formula page on your quizzes and midterms. So now is a good time to, over the weekend, uh, print out the cheat sheet if you want to, or it'll be on the back of your first quiz. Your, well, not your first quiz. Your next quiz will have the cheat sheet right on it. So you can just keep a copy of that around. So you'll always have access to the formula page when you're doing your quiz and midterms in the future. So I'm putting this in a box, but I'm going to write, you don't need to memorize. So this is on your cheat sheet. So you don't need to memorize this one. You do need to know that it exists. So we're going to go ahead and prove this. And the way we're going to do so is looking at two circles.
So in our first circle, we're going to measure, that'll be angle B, and that'll be angle A. So what would be the measurement of that angle between the two? So we're going to use subtraction. What's the name of this angle right here? So to find the difference between two things, you usually go end minus start or big minus small. So this will be go A and then come back B. So that will be A minus B. And one way to think about it, just think of you're rotating A and then you're rotating negative B. So I'll go over A and then come back B. And now we're going to look at points on the unit circle. And we're going to look at one distance. And this distance is super important, so I'm going to use a green pen for this distance right here. So we're going to write down the coordinates of the first point. So the coordinates of the first point are cos A sine B. Court, no, cos A cos B. Wow. No. Cos A sine A. That's the first point. The second point, cos B sine B. These are just the x, y coordinates on the unit circle at those two angles. And now we're going to go to the second circle. I'm going to draw the same angle, A minus B, except I'm going to draw it in standard position. So there's the same angle, A minus B, except written in the normal position, in standard position. And I'm going to draw in that line segment where the line segment rotated to. And the name of these points, so that first point is going to be cos A minus B and sine A minus B. What is the coordinate of the other green point on the x-axis, or on the unit circle. So our other point is just 1 comma 0. It's the regular point over there. So the thing we're going to, the property we're going to use on these two graphs to relate them is the distance of the line segment. So it should be the exact same distance on either of the two green line segments, just rotate it around. So the length of the line segment or the distance. So if I write out the full ugly formula, I'll write distance one equals distance two. So that'll be the distance between the points. So in the first one, cos A sine A, cos B sine B equals the distance between the other two points, cos A minus B sine A minus B comma zero one. No, one zero. So the distance between the two points are equal. <clears throat> have we written down distance formula this class? I don't think we have. 
So I'll write down the distance formula quickly off to the right side. So distance is square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So nobody really likes square roots. So if the distances are equal, well then the square of the distances are equal. So we'll uh, square the distance function and that'll knock out that square root right there. So we'll square the distance function is going to knock out that square root that was there. So we're just going to square both of these distances and that'll allow me to not write that square root on both sides. All right, using that formula in the upper right corner, so I have x2 minus x1, so it'll be cos b minus cos a. squared plus y2 sine b minus y1 sine a squared. So we're just using distance formula and plugging in the x1, uh, y1, x2, y2. Right side is going to be similar. And we have for our x's, so it'll be 1 minus cos a minus b squared plus 0 minus sine a minus b squared. And now we get to our favorite math operation, foiling. We're going to foil everything out, so it's going to get uglier before it gets better. So I'll foil the first term for you. You can just watch, and then you're going to foil the other three of them. So remember, when we foil, I'll write really quickly foiling, although this is something we've done lots of times. A minus B squared is going to be A squared plus uh, minus a b minus a b so it's minus 2 a b plus b squared so you get the plus b squared because it's negative b times negative b is positive b and a similar way a plus b squared a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared so when i foil i'm just going to use one of these two uh, i think they're all minus so we'll be using the first one that i wrote down I just don't want you to forget inside-outside terms when we FOIL. So we have cos squared b minus 2 cos b cos a plus cos squared a. So that's just the first term. plus the second term foiled, sine squared minus 2 sine a sine b plus sine squared a. So any questions on those two ugly products? So now we're going to run to the right side and completely run out of room. You know what, let's uh, keep going on the left side. I'm not going to change the right side because I don't have enough room on the board to write all this. All right, some of this stuff's actually nice. I'm going to underline two things. 
Let's look at uh, cos squared A plus sine squared A. What do those add up to? Oh, very good. So those both, they don't cancel, but they turn into a 1. What about sine squared B plus cos squared B? Those turn into another 1. So what I underlined, all of that turns into plus 2. So everything I underlined turns into a plus 2. And now I'm just going to copy down what's not underlined. And actually, I need more room on the right side. So this is minus 2 cos b cos a minus 2 sine a sine b plus 2. So this is some weird cancellation that you're not used to. It's kind of weird that two things add up to, to 1. That's a little bit strange. But it's something you need to get used to because the Pythagorean identity. And now I'm going to copy down the right side and I'll 